Thanks for staying with us. Ni Nigeria may have to implement a nationwide lockdown to stem the rise of COVID-19 cases. Such a drastic measure would alter the country's energy consumption pattern, and this will further burden an already dilapidated power supply system. The global health crisis coinc uh, coincides with a countrywide electricity crisis. Now, the crisis is underscored by the energy demand significantly exceeding supply. A number of factors contribute to this, and they include a fragmented gas market. Um, the country generates about 80% of its power from gas-fired power stations. So, um, seasonal availability of water supply is another factor. Now, low-level limits the output of hydroelectric power plants. That's low-level water. Yeah. yeah, it limits that. So All On is an impact investment company that brings together investors and access to energy providers to roll out solutions that are scalable and commercially sustainable. Their mission is to increase access to commercial energy, products and services for underserved and unserved off-grid energy markets in Nigeria. Afolabi Akinrogunde is the investment manager all on partnerships for energy access and he's joined us tonight. He's responsible for leading all on's origination deal structuring, negotiation, due diligence, and investee management functions. Now remember, you can join this conversation, tweet it out at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Thank you so much for joining us, Afolabi. Are you there? Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. All right, so we, we, we are looking at the healthcare sector in Nigeria, and I saw something really, really interesting and profound, you know, that your company is doing, and I thought it was important that we bring it to the fore, especially since the crisis, we have been looking for ways to find solutions to existing um, problems, especially in our healthcare sector, and one of which is, the, is major is um, energy. You know, I was reading somewhere in the... You know, in a country where there's data, like in the U.S., it's easy for you to find certain kinds of um, information. And it, 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 something interesting struck me. And they, they, they said that um, an average hospital spent about 61% um, energy, you know, depending on the climate. You know, they spend about 61% on energy in terms of revenue. 61% of their revenue goes That's to just lot. energy. That's a lot, you know. So how do we help hospitals in Nigeria, you know, in terms of powering? Because we know that power is, is a huge, um, what's it called? Is a huge, plays a huge role. Plays a huge role in transforming the healthcare sector. So how do we transform the healthcare sector, you know, bringing cheaper power, you know, to them? Okay, I think we, we lost um, Afalabi. But let me read out what I saw in the, the research. Now, okay. um, they said the hospital in the U.S. spends an average of $1.67 uh, $1 on mm -hmm. electricity and $0.48 cents on natural gas per square, foot, wow. per square foot annually. Now, lighting, heating, and hot water represents 61%, and hot water is 79%. Wow. Consumption of total use, depending on the climate. So mm -hmm. now, you know, in our climes, we don't have that extreme weather condition. Exactly. So we are even supposed to be the one in terms of... We should have We are it. supposed to be boiling, you know. Exactly. We're supposed to be boiling. So that's why the question I want to ask um, Afolabi, if you can mm -hmm. hear me, is how do we help hospitals to reduce the cost of energy? You know, since a standard hospital, according to the U.S., is Looks that 61% like of that of what they consume, you know, 61% mm -hmm. goes to energy. So how do we even start? Mm. Well, the thing first of all is to is to is to is to determine as a country and as a people that um that that health facilities are critical and to give them that um that that Attention. level of support. Um for example, if a bank doesn't have power, you can always come back and check and cash your check tomorrow or do whatever transaction you want to do tomorrow. But if an hospital doesn't have the levels of power supply, the reliability of power supply that, that it needs, human lives are at stake. 
you've got people having operations, you've got babies being born, you've got surgeries being done, you've got um, vaccines being 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 um, being refrigerated that that don't need to be below a certain temperature. So 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 actually, we have to first of all sit down and say, as a country, this is important. This is a matter of um of security of energy security for for our country. I think that is the first um, level of um, of importance. And then we have to start looking at it in terms of tiers. Of, of energy security, do you have to have, for example, one level which is going to be maybe public grid grid supply, and then you have maybe level two, which would then be probably something like 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 a generator or even solar, such that if your grid supply goes down, you then put your level two, your level two um 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 a level of support in terms of electricity online, which would then ensure that at least you have you you have the energy required to enable you continue saving lives and keeping people safe. Mm. Okay, so the COVID-19 relief fund is giving the health sector access to modern energy services. Can it be sustained? Well, the, um, the first thing for us we tried to do with, with this fund basically was to first of all showcase the, the reliability of solar solar power i think that was the first thing really we wanted to do and the key thing also was that if, if you if you yeah if you if you observed all of the facilities which were which were which were the the first and even second line um of, of protection for nigeria and nigerians against the covid 19 pandemic were basically government facilities so these were your tertiary medical um, medical institutions your 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 teaching hospitals your general hospitals your your, nothing, your, your national hospital, so to speak. And these are government owned. Well, I think we're having a bit of struggle with um, technology. <laughs> well, you Somebody know. said Nigeria's um, internet is quite epileptic. <laughs> ah, tell me something new. All exactly. right, so, you know, um, the CEO for NCDC mm -hmm. made something because his company, and uh, uh, if we have him back, I would like to ask him. Yeah. His company, you know, has done significantly in providing alternate sol so, um, solutions. solutions in terms of powering. Power supply. Yeah. So the, the the NCDC boss says we are grateful to Orland for the support rendered to isolation and healthcare healthcare facilities via provision of solar power at a time where healthcare infrastructures are in critical need especially the hospitals because mm. in cases like this there have been cases where a doctor is performing surgery and out of the blues nepa strikes no there's no more nepa or phc <laughs> <laughs> strikes. So, so at the end of the day you find out that somebody might might have uh, died they, on the we, hospital see that's why um, we, we are not focusing bed. so for us mm -hmm. today we don't even want to focus on the problems because mm -hmm. truly a lot of people I mean, a lot of death that has happened mm -hmm. in hospitals were needless. You know, I have seen cases where mm -hmm. the baby needed to be put in a, an incubator Better, and the baby because died because, you know, there was no, no light. light to power the incubator. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know... That's why I'm saying that having solar panel yeah. in the hospitals so for, no, I, I even want to ask about the sustainability and the, how mm -hmm. easy it will be to be able to maintain it for long runs. Now, mm. we're not talking because why I quoted this um, NCDC CEO, yeah. he's talking about the isolation centers, right, mm -hmm. and healthcare facilities. We know that in Nigeria, we have a lot of, the way we have private schools, pockets yes. of private schools all over, scattered all over the place. That are is helping the, same, the education sector. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. same way we have pockets and pockets of hospitals. You know, Very true. there are some that are good, quiet, small hospitals that are good. There are some that Very are true. mushroom hospitals and all of that. So if we want to bring a holistic solution to the healthcare sector, are we focusing only on the government hospitals mm -hmm. or we are looking at it and taking it, you know, to the to all the areas? Because they private. focus on rural areas. Mm -hmm. They focus on, you know, reaching those kind of core Grass areas. Roots. Yeah. So that's the kind of um, that's the kind of solutions that I want to see where you can go to a village and you would see the hospital fully powered. So if, um, if we have a Falabi back, uh, <laughs> sorry, we're losing your network. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So we are going to say this one is not electricity now. <laughs> no, this is, this, is, um... this is a network problem. So exactly. do you want to finish your line of thought, what you were saying about what ECS or uh, we just go ahead? 
No, no, it was um, I don't I don't remember where exactly I was cut off, but the thing really is okay. still or I will still go back to what you were saying about more or less the the the, the, the private. So basically any solution that is supposed that is going to resolve any challenge in Nigeria has to look at the at the private sector because a lot of Nigerians are of course private um, um, uh, patronize private hospitals, private schools and, yeah. and what have you. So, so, so the solution, for example, this uh, this facility we have, the all on uh, COVID nineteen solar relief fund, uh, is is a one eighty million fund. Ninety million out of this is basically grant. So we basically give that out to 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 practically roll out these facilities in these government hospitals for free. And then the other ninety million is actually a facility with a very very low interest um, mm. uh, uh, facility aimed at aimed at providing solar to to health centers. On a commercial basis, mm. so this uh, this solution is more is more tilted towards the private sector. And currently, we are working with one or two um, of of our investees who are who, who are working on solutions to support privately owned medical facilities, giving them the 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 energy requirement for them to continue operation exactly. operating with 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 or without um, grid power. Okay, so okay. Ofalobi, you have brought me there. I wanted to maybe take that second half. But you know, there's something you you are known for. I mean, there's a tag here, Partnership for Energy Access, right? So can you even run us through how this partnership works? There's a small hospital watching because right now we're not focusing on so much of the problems. We already know that we have pockets of this hospital. So how do we bring them up to speed, up to standard, you know, to at least even have basic thing, which is the, like 60% of the, their requirement, which is power, to be able to power their facility, to be able to do the little, little things that they can do in there. So how, you know, so how does the partnership, you know, to access an energy works? Okay, I think I, I need to take this back to our, to our, to the, to the Razon de Tris, so to speak, of all on. Uh, we're basically an impact investor in the energy access space. And what, we're, and what we do more or less is to ensure that the, the underserved segment of the society have access to power. And it is clear, basically, when we talk about off-grid power, it's basically non-grid power. And it's clear to us that a lot of things, you, you, you need to have 10,000 things go right before on-grid power can work in Nigeria. Mm. So we decided to, to leave that for the government and the, and the other stakeholders in that area and face off-grid power. And off grid power basically is a lot more is a lot more easy is a lot more easy for you to work is it's a lot more easy easy to work through because you can have, for example, a grid for just a community. You know, four, five, six streets in Lagos can sit down and have mini grid. Your village can have a mini grid just serving the twenty or fifty houses in your in your village. And there are currently well over forty mini grids operating in Nigeria, with a plan to increase that number to well over five thousand over the next decade. So we've got so there are various solutions which are available in the off-grid space. We have solar home systems, which are basically some small facilities to provide the equivalent of your I better pass pass my neighbor my generator, neighbor. basically giving power or slightly like half half of that capacity, giving power to 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 to, to homes and any people to to do their homework, to be able to watch TV, to be able to to listen to the radio without having to put on a generator or without having to to, to use fuel. And then you have slightly larger systems. We can then have places like hospitals, like barbing salons, like like hairdressing shops. And these are also available in the market today. Currently, right now, through our systems, through, through our investments, we've connected in jointly in, in partnership with other people, over well over 120,000 individuals in Nigeria to, to today into our systems. And our plan, hopefully, is to connect well over a million over the next decade. So it is, a, it is, and of course, you know, we've got 200 million people in Nigeria. So it is a huge target. It's a huge challenge that I need to solve. We are taking it community by community, home by home, business by business. Okay, amazing. So what has been your biggest challenge so far? As investors, you know, basically I'm not, I'm not an engineer. Yeah. We basically are just a finance, business development and, and investment people. I think we only have one, engi one, one engineer in our, in our team. Uh, we basically, we are investors in companies, so we need to have enough companies actually in this space. Um, that have it, that, that have the capacity to actually grow and make the 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 difference needed in this space. So that really is the biggest challenge we have right now. We need to have as many companies as is possible. So actually, one of the things we do in this play in, in in this space is to is to also act more or less as as a 
as a as a as a venture as as a venture capitalist in, investor in the energy access space. So basically, we give a lot of grants. We also partner with, with other sister agencies in the government and also foreign governments to also give investments, small investments into companies, hoping that those companies will grow and become the larger companies, which will then be able to 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 to, to serve five hundred thousand, two million, ten million. 10 million Nigerians over the next five to 10 years. So, so, so the biggest challenge we have right now is actually getting those companies right now with the, that can invest in building those companies. So, actually, what we're doing over the first, over, over since last, since uh, two years ago up to now is to build the ecosystems of companies that can actually become, be, become great, be, 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 that can test their, their, their investment, their, their, their investment metal, their, their delivery metal in the market, deliver hopefully on a sustainable basis, and then grow that across one state, two states, three states, and across the the country. So we've had a lot of success in that in that regard. Um, we have a partnership with the USADF, an agency of the US government where we give $50,000 in loans and then they give $50,000 in grants for people to put in place power projects in various communities across Nigeria. As I speak to you now, we have well over 25 companies that we've invested in to, to that point. And, and we've taken about two, one or two of those companies now from the successes we've had over the last two years. We are giving them a lot more money now to actually grow and do even better. So, so our hope is that out of these 25 companies, we can have about five to six companies that can then become 10 million, 20 million, 50 million dollar companies over the, the next two, two to five years. And by becoming that, they can then continue, to, they can now begin to come to your villages, to your homes, to your towns, to your markets, to bring the power which you need for, 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 for to, to, make, to make economic progress and to make any energy access acceptable to all in the country. Okay, well, Falabi, thank you for your marketing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to know, I want to understand um, the cost effect, you know, that comes to the end user, you know, and mm. how sustainable or what is your projection? Do you think we can actually sustain if we project and we say, okay, yes, in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, we'll be able to take ourselves from the headache of greed or no greed you understand and just go off the grid and just probably is the solar solution a very very sustainable solution that can power nigeria well what what, what i will say is that uh, we will still need to get our grid our, our own grid solutions right however we, we do not need to wait it doesn't have to be one has to die for the other to work both of them can work in conjunction and make um, and, and and give nigerian energy they um, but but the, but the, but, the, but the key thing really is that solar cost more cost effective with each passing year. Um, the last twenty years, solar cost so, solar panel costs have dropped well over ninety percent. Well over ninety percent. It costs a lot. It costs a lot less today to put solar solution together, especially in USD terms, than it cost two years ago. Yeah. The difference really has been because of the differences in the in exchange rate, as you know. Um, if, if we know what has happened to the Naira between between uh, between five years ago and now, but but if you look at it on a pure dollar basis, it's actually a lot cheaper now, and it continues to be cheaper. Panels are cheaper, battery technology is getting better and cheaper, and and, and it's permitting many many other countries in the world. There have been entire weeks of the year in Germany, in the UK, where the entire power that has been generated for the country throughout that day throughout that week was using purely renewable energy it, there was no gas there was there was no diesel there was no coal it was purely no clean energy all through that day all through that week so it is that that can be done it is something but however we will still need to have number one government realizing that it needs to be a partnership and we'll also need to have as much government support to ensure that the cost of, of setting, having renewable energy solutions in Nigeria is competitive. Because I think we need to start looking at this as a country and as a people as, an, as, 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 a, as a security matter. If your country is unable to provide security for yourselves, you, you cannot make your own food, you cannot power your own people, mm. then you are not fully, fully secure. So I think we need to start that. For example, we have all sorts of government with government, government levies, um, customs and all of that that make 
and add 20, 30 percent to the coming of getting um, of, of of getting all of this input from renewable energy into the market. If those can be reduced or cut off, then it's going to cost you and I 20 to 30 percent less to actually have these energy energy so any energy solutions in our homes. So, but but the thing is actually it is actually becoming a lot more a lot more common. Um, I'm, I'm sure you will see many streets in Lagos are, are, are being lit using using a uh, right, so renewable going to continue. energy lamps. Yeah, we're going to continue the conversation, but we have to go on a quick yeah. break. We'll be right back to discuss okay. power. Thank you. Yeah.